What the hell is this, yo? <laughs> this looks like an advertisement for Party City, yo. Like if you is 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 October first and is <laughs> sale, and this is that's right. Come on, man. What is this, yo? What is this? <laughs> 900 what? characters, Pablo. 900 <laughs> characters. What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Man Mando and Grogu are getting a film, apparently, Brian. Kathleen Kennedy ain't going nowhere. Whatever she got in the drawer or in the <laughs> vault, wherever she, whatever info she got is good enough to keep her there forever. <laughs> My thoughts when I heard the news, I haven't read any articles about it, I just saw the headline. They're really squeezing the juice out of this. Um, we're not only getting another season, right? Before this movie? Uh, that's not for sure. Okay, so we might get a movie first. It seems like the movie will come before. Yeah, we'll talk. I, I think this is actually a really good discussion to have because, okay. as usual, confusion reigns in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, because there's a bunch of news that just come out. But yeah. So if you remember the last public appearance of Kathleen Kennedy, which we <laughs> we, we, we well documented <laughs> that one. Um, but I think, you know, <laughs> if we get away from that. I'm not leaving. I'm not going to get away from that display. Yeah. As usual, the roadmap that she laid out for Star Wars has immediately been blown up and changed. So we knew we were getting this Dave Filoni verse culmination movie, which at the time we understood to be, okay, take Mandalorian, take Book of Boba Fett, take Ahsoka, and all of those TV shows will then head toward this so we see in the report that film apparently is still on track. But now this film is happening before that film. It's a little confusing. Like yeah. why? Like what what's the, what's the point? Um there was also a report that which actually was confirmed. So John Favreau is directing this movie. Now that's a good sign, I would say, that he's actually going to do it himself. However, he also confirmed is that he said he had submitted completed scripts for season four, all of them. So season four was done, like in the can, written, not filmed, but written. And now they're saying that might not happen and they're pivoting to a movie instead. Now, how much of his script work from the TV, from that season four will become this, who knows? Oh, and then the other thing, which is completely unsurprising is if you remember, they were the movie that launched our, <laughs> our whole spiel about Kathleen Kennedy was this Ray Jedi Order movie, which supposedly was going to be fast tracked and was going to be the first Star Wars film we saw since Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Oops. This is going to be the first movie we see. Yeah. And that movie now has been pushed back. Just another day. Just another day in, in Kathy Kennedy land. But do you do see the business uh, reason for the movie, right? Um, I see a business reason for the movie. Yes, I see, yeah. I see a pattern. <laughs> to me, what's the business reason? The business reason they would say is like these characters are widely recognizable, popular. They sell a ton of toys, and the family. We can get the families to go to the movies, so they can pay per ticket as opposed to by subscription. Correct. Get that extra. That's money. it. Like yeah, that. that yeah. That's what they see. Yes. What I see is Kathleen Kennedy doesn't like taking risks in her mind. How, like, this is cut from the same cloth to me as Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker. Like, think about it. Like, they waited how many years to do Force Awakens? 10, right? Yeah. And what she greenlit and approved was basically a remake of New Hope. That's pretty safe. Yeah. Now, whatever you think of Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson tried to go in some different directions. And what happened? 
Kathleen Kennedy sent them running back, <laughs> running back to retcon and redo and, you know, and into, into the disaster that became Rise of Skywalker. To me, this feels very much a piece of that. Like, this is safe. Yeah. These characters are safe. Are they going to deliver a classic in a billion dollar movie? I say there's no chance. Zero. This show's not that popular. Ratings for season three were down over 20% from season two. People didn't like season three with these characters. It's not to say the movie can't make money, but like this thing, again, should not be budgeted at $200 million. If it is, yeah. that's risky. Then it becomes risky not to take it. Yeah. If you have season four written, shoot season and, and, and then shoot. It's not like you need Pedro Pascal on set. <clears throat> it's not like you need the actor that plays Grogu to have a, a, a clear schedule. And by the way, Grogu by now needs to say something. I he need he need to be. You know how the the, the gorilla grabbed James Franco and told him home, and, they, and he was like, "I need to be like that. I need to Grogu to speak and do something than just cooing all the time." But this fits my point about Kathy Kennedy doesn't take risks because this character sells toys this character became popular because it eats soup and coos and makes funny sounds there's been no character development with grogu who is it feloni that's the sole gatekeeper for that or is there someone commercially behind the scenes saying we can't let this character grow up because if this character grows up then it no longer is this cute fuzzy toy that kids want to snuggle but, but I, if i but, but if i'm in the room and i'm talking to kennedy i'll be like listen if you Look at Yoda, man. You gonna you gonna tell me Yoda didn't sell? Yoda was an old man. He was nine hundred years old. He still sold. Grogu can sell forever. So why not? Let's say you doing you do season four. By the end of we're leading up to Grogu, perhaps. And this is just you know me spitballing. The last two episodes, Grogu's in a rig. You know how in um, the the last season he was in the in the in that room with those two uh, security guards, the yep. red dudes. Yep. Wouldn't it have been dope that when Manda went to, to to go help him, that he would just stand there and those dudes just been laid out. And then in season four, we get a li- we get to see a little more. But at the end, we see Grogu go crazy. Yeah. Wouldn't that be dope to lead into a movie to see his progression, his evolution? Because ain't this what this is all about for you guys? Yeah. The most interesting things about this character since it was interesting things about the character since it was introduced has been sort of the Order 66 flashback. And some of Luke's comments when he's quote unquote training him saying like, it's basically what he's allowing me to do. Like yeah. those are things that lead you to places that are interesting storytelling. But see, I just feel like, I feel like Kathy Kenny puts the clamps on that sort of stuff. And she just kind of says like, nah, we're not doing that. We, we stick to our lane. We stay, we stay safe because if you make him a dynamic character for people like us, it becomes something that we're interested to see where it goes. And yes, it could fail. It could be bad. But it could also be great. Yes. I'd rather it be great than safe. Which you which you did, and you may be it paid off well, but that fan fair isn't there. But like the iron then the irony too is like I think about when they tried to expand this universe, because that's what this is really trying to do on the on the big screen. Rogue One was a mess of a production, but was a massive hit. Why? Because it wrote in interesting directions. It, it gave you interesting characters that you hadn't seen before in a story you were familiar with versus <laughs> Solo. Yeah. yeah. Like Solo which was, was the like- definition of playing it safe, right? <laughs> with known characters and the movie busted and bombed. Rogue One began from a good premise, though. How did they get those plans? Right, but that thing could have been played safe too. They turned True. it into a war movie, and it True. worked. Yeah. Like that was that was a risk. I mean, now, granted, Tony Gilroy between that and Andor has been the this guiding hand in Star Wars that has made different things successful. But imagine he wrote a Jedi story, man. Well, I gotta be honest. Like, I guess we're gonna find out at some point if they'll ever release this. But like, you wanna you wanna take a risk with a movie? Make the acolyte a movie. 
I, I already have this feeling that we're going to see that show and be like, yo, why, why isn't this a movie? Star Wars Kung Fu? Why, why are we not? <laughs> why, are we, why, why are we not doing this as a movie? That even sounds crazy. Star Wars uh, Kung Fu. But that's a good pitch. If you're in a room with executives, what else do you need to say? I got a pitch for Star Wars <laughs> Kung Fu. <laughs> it just walks it's out. It's it. And leave your number. Here's my card. <laughs> and just walk out. <laughs> oh, snap, man. Just send a check, man. Just send a check. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, I, could like, I can't even. Ah, oh, man. And nobody talked. That show's been buried. Like, there's nothing. They wouldn't even put out the sizzle reel, which was looked awesome. The little bit that got leaked. They, I'm like, that's what I mean. Like, you might have gold in that, but like, you won't let us see it. You won't promote it. And instead, you just wanna you wanna stay with these two characters. Who great? Like, they've been great. I'm not trying to like just pile on them. I'm just kind of saying like, yeah, it's getting a little old. And like this, this doesn't feel like. We're taking the franchise in interesting new directions. And it makes me ask questions about, like, it seemed like Filoni had this master plan for these series that he wanted to link up. And it's like, this feels like the studio getting in the way and sort of being like, no, 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 we need to, we need to rush these two characters because we need a movie. We need a movie. These two could give us a movie, so we do it. There's also, Brian, that, the, 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 that they're actually doing this Ray movie that she's going to uh, helm and be the, I guess, the one to uh, reinvigorate the Jedi Order. Yeah, this was just this movie's already going to make me mad because it's gonna, basically going to be like the Jedi Academy movie with Luke that I never got, which is always the one I wanted to see. But like that's effectively what they're trying to do. But yeah. already, again, this was supposed to be fast tracked, and now it's being pushed back. So this has been my whole like when they announce these things with Star Wars, you kind of just have to look at it with skepticism because we've seen this so many times where. The plan isn't the plan because she doesn't really have a plan in the end. Just hire Sebastian Stan, man. Get um, what's this guy? Um, <laughs> Who Mark, Mark Hamill has formally blessed. He's like, yeah, I would love to see this. <laughs> like, yeah. What are we waiting for, man? What are we waiting for? Sebastian Stan said, I'm here. <laughs> He's already in the building, literally. He'd be like, I'll leave Thunderbolts in a second to be Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Before we sign off, I need everyone to take a look at this. Look at this. What the hell is this, yo? This looks like an advertisement for Party City, yo. Like if you, it's, it's, it's October 1st and it's sale and this is, That's right. come on, man. What is this, yo? What is this? In the category of not having a plan when you say you have a plan, 900 what? characters, Pablo. 900 <laughs> characters. How much money do you think this is? How much money is the budget for this? 100? I, I'm guessing it's between like 100 and 125. Yeah. Wow. It's the still thing, not making money. There's no chance. But no you chance. never know, Brian. People are out there. Is, uh, I'm going to party. I mean, the go. Marvels didn't get to 200. This thing is not getting to 250 or three. True that, true that, true that, true that, true that. Because nobody knows who Madam Web is. No. And... This and it, looks like, oh my goodness. Come on, like uh, everyone who sees the trailer and everyone who sees this poster is going to ask one question. Where's Spider-Man? The entire thing. Like the entire thing. It's like, you're right. It's like, it, it looks like the family, it's like the family <laughs> trick or treat, you know, but no <laughs> Spider-Man. It looks like a band. Like Josie and the Pussycats or something. <laughs> going out for Halloween. Yo, I don't know what to tell you guys, but these are the shenanigans that Sony, because they have a ton of money because of the money they've made off of the Spider-Man movies, that they can just make movies and, and make a little profit here and there if, if they just so happen to make it, Brian. If they so, they're not going into this guaranteeing it. They're going into this because they have all this money. We got to do something with it. Let's make movies. And they're making the most superhero movies next year. They have three. They have Madam Web, uh, Venom 3, and, and Craven. Craven. Right? DC and Marvel each only have one, which actually those one are probably guaranteed hits, right? Deadpool 3 and Joker 2. But Sony's going to be littering, littering the box office with potentially three 
we'll see how, I mean, Venom has been successful, even if I don't love the product, but um, I mean, this, this is Dio. I, I, I like, so to me, like if you are in the marketing, if, if you're the studio execs who greenlit that and your creatives and your marketing team show you that poster, like, are you just taking the write down now? Like, you just look at that and be like, what did we do? <laughs> who thought this was a good idea? The weird one about that to me is Sydney Sweeney, because she's, she's actually kind of hot up and coming actress. I was surprised when they, when she signed on to do well, this. She, is, is, is she a monarch? No. Um, she, she's in sort of a, what's one, oh man, I'm, it's the, she's in like the risque show with uh, Zendaya, the one that's really uh -huh. popular. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. She's been in a couple. Um, things. She's been in a couple things on TV, and people really like her. And now she's got this. Uh, she had that kind of like low budget romantic comedy with Glenn Powell, Anyone But You, that just came out. Ah, uh, um, okay. But then I just I was shocked when she took this part because I was like, this isn't gonna take you places. This, this, this is, is this is that thing about the agents at that time were telling them, this is the bag, like this is the guaranteed yeah, 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 money yeah, yeah. and the door opener. I guarantee you she has buyer's remorse on, on that one. Oh, certainly. The agents are, are probably being yelled at right now. They're probably being looked at like, why did you do this? But uh, this right here, man, just looks like... Looks amateur. That's something you pick up at Blockbuster. Like, oh, what's this? Or it's something you pick up in an adult <laughs> film store. I hate to say it. I didn't want to say it. It was going through my mind, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> It'll it'll be on the watch list. <laughs> but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the Mando movie, uh, the Mando the Mandalorian movie, and where Grogu is at at this stage of his, I guess, evolution. Um. What do you prefer seeing? Do you prefer seeing the season first, then the movie, the movie first? Or what do you guys think about what they're doing with the Star Wars franchise? Because right now, it's Disney. You got to blame Disney now, right? Because MCU is crazy. Star Wars, Star Wars is crazy. None of no, Disney Plus is crazy. Disney. Is 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 out of Bob Iger is I, he? I'm pretty sure he regrets coming back, Brian. <laughs> he has to. He has to. He was probably chilling. <laughs> and then they call him like, "Please come back, the, please, please." Polio? Just when I thought I was out. That's yeah. That's what it was. Oh man, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes.